Welcome back to GMBN Racing News Show, everyone, with myself, Rich Payne, and this week I'm joined by this guy, Martin Ashton. Hello. Now, this week we're going to be taking an in-depth look at round two of the Enduro World Cup from Derby, Tasmania. Wet weather, wild trails and big rock slabs. All to come on this week's Racing News. Right, before we get started, if you want the full premium UCI Mountain Bike World Series package, including worldwide access to absolutely all events, plus the full length live UCI World Series Elite Finals, which should be an absolute must see, then head over to GCM Plus to find out more and subscribe. Right now, Rich, what did we learn this week? Mate, we learned some harsh lessons, or the riders certainly did, because it rains out in Tassie, it rains a lot. Yeah, practice was a quagmire, wasn't it? It was absolutely bogging. Check out this clip from Charlie Murray. Oh now, my God. Yeah, it's horrendous, isn't it? Yeah, we're actually <sighs> gonna be catching up with Charlie later on in the show, so do stay tuned for that. And also, Martin, it's fairly rocky. Yeah, you fairly noticed. rocky. Uh, and right back to proper enduro racing, this one. Yeah, absolutely. So, big days out, all pedaling, no assisted uplifts on any of the stages, just some good old leg-busting slogs. Yeah, difficult stuff. Martin, let's start with a quick rewind. Round one, Medina saw Luke Meyer-Smith take a debut win in the elite men's class, whilst Isabeau Kuduria picked up where she left off winning the women's category. That's right, Rich. Now, it's not been plain sailing for a few riders out there, notably Elliot Heap mm. of Nukeproof SRAM Factory Racing, who sadly had a nasty crash during stage six of that Medina World Cup, injuring his shoulder, which would sadly put him out of Derby. But with a large gap until round three finale, we should see him back fighting fit and ready to race. That's it, Noga Karem, sadly, of GT Factory Racing, she also took a tumble during the practice of Derby, sustaining a possible concussion, so decided to sit out the race after seeking medical advice just to be on the safe side. Now, the course in Derby had riders tackling six stages over 42.5 kilometers, climbing and descending 1,444 meters. The crowning jewel in the race and the largest stage for the riders was Karma Gutsa at 4.1 kilometers long and dropping 398 meters. Ooh. It's also the winner of the 2019 Trail of the Year, so a rider favorite. Mm, yeah, practice was not for the faint-hearted. Torrential rain all day and temperatures below 10 degrees, Mark, tested both riders and bikes, causing the trails to turn into an absolute slop fest. Given the slower speeds and technical nature of the stages too, it was going to be a physical race. Now, with the sun shining through, Mark, on race day, there was actually a glimmer of hope as the tracks transformed through, from a quagmire, basically, to almost yeah. pleasurable for the riders, at the slop even turning to dust. All right, stage one. What did they face? Right, physical, peddly, tough conditions. As the mud started to dry out, it became yeah. very thick and just horrible to try and get through. It was not fun for the riders at all. And Isabeau Corduria, sadly her day not shaping up to start as she'd wanted to carry on. That practice crash that yeah. she had sustained, hurting her leg, it wasn't gonna go well. Yeah, now that crash, that could have taken her out of the event, I think, but she did battle on though and made sure she got some very important points and that could prove important as the series plays out. Yeah, definitely. And with the physicality, fitness would prove key as Hattie Harden took the first stage win, showing that the, uh, the effort had paid off. Yeah, actually, standout ride as well from Zoe Cuthbert, XC Whippet, yeah. uh, showing the fitness count, he'd get in a third place. Yeah, uh, nice. What about the men's? Right, men's. It kicked off, Mark. It kicked off. Remy Govan took a hell of a slam. That would put him out the rest of the day. And the big four are back, buddy. Yes, they are. We've got, obviously, Mays and we've got Ruse. Yeah, we've also got Melamed and Moya all back. in the top 10 on the first stage. So right where we want to see them. Yeah, so the results in that one were Rude first. We had Lukasic in second. And Eddie Masters. Yeah. He doesn't go away, does he? he? You can't get rid of the bugger. He's Great fast as anything. Rider. It's good Consistency. to see him there. Stage two, Dan Busters then, Mark. And it was a bit of a surprise third place finish in, in the women's. Yeah, Barbara Prokova from the Czech Republic taking that third place spot. Yeah, and right, at the sharp end this of the women's, it. the battle was heating up, should we say. Bex yeah. Barona and Hattie Harden 
were going at it. Bex Barona winning this stage of the Yeti Factory team by five seconds and going into the lead. And in the men's then, Dan Booker, fresh from that second place mm. in Medina. A bit of a slow start, 18th on stage one, but absolutely hauling on stage yeah. two for his seventh place. Yeah, Lukasic though, second in that first stage, mm -hmm. he's absolutely on it in this one. Um, gave his teammate Rude a whipping, he's taken first and Rude in second. Great day for Yeti so Yeah, far. exactly, with Barona winning the women's stage. Mm. The team was looking good, shall we say? Yeah, very good. Okay, on to stage three. Trouty, Martin. Yeah, it's so called because there's a massive rock slab in it shaped like a trout. <laughs> that makes sense, yeah, right. Yeah. A very physical stage again and big crowds. Now this would see Bex Brona finish fourth Ooh. on this stage. Yeah, um, Ella Connolly though, going very, very quick in this one and taking her only stage win of the race. Yeah, okay, in the men's, Luke Meyer-Smith, mate. Mm. Winner of that round one in Medina. Yeah. He'd come down with a bit of a bug, so unfortunately the giant factory rider would soldier on to finish 17th overall on the day. Oh, big hit. Yeah. Uh, Melamed, much like the trails, was warming up nicely though. He's doing well, isn't he, Melamed? He's good, yeah. Uh, he's consistent. Uh, yeah, he'd take the stage win on this one, bouncing back nicely after that wild moment in Medina. And Mays, but you'd have a bit of a stinker finishing stage three and 31st, losing a bit of time to the leaders. Halfway through the day then, and it was Rude leading the overall in the men's and Bex Barona in the women's, as riders had a brief break for lunch, giving the mechanics time to check over the bikes before heading back out. Yeah, stage four is where they were heading to detonate. Whoa! Yes, uh, yeah. iconic. You might have seen pictures of that narrow rock gully oh, that they ride through. this is through. the one through that rock that gully, That is yeah. it, yeah. yeah. And big crowds once again. Top four paired off into two duels with Morgan Shah and Connolly hot on the heels of Handen and Barona. Mm, would they catch them though? It's a couple of big battles in there going yeah, on. Yeah, absolutely. Right, in the men's, Moya of the Y team of is starting to shine finally as he smashed a third place in this stage. Yeah, he's looking pretty casual, isn't yeah. he? He's just a cruisy kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. the whole kit and everything. Though. Yeah, Dan yeah. Booker, he's also coming on strong, working up to sixth in the pack. But it was Lukasic again showing yeah. strength as he took another stage win, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. That would tighten things up at the top between him and, of course, his teammate. Stage five, cuddles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the one. A couple mm. of notable features on this. Two humongous rock slabs. One like a big wall ride yeah, and one a rider. massive shoot. Actually claiming some pretty big... Crashes yeah, down there, some, some monster very, ones. very tough stuff going on. Crowds lined it and the descent cheering the riders on. Um, good results for Liana Curtis and Rafaela Richter on the penultimate stage, crossing the line in third and fourth respectively. Yeah, and it was Harden and Barona continuing their feud at the top with Harden yeah. gaining a three second advantage over Barona, enough to see the two riders share the same second in the overall standings, just oh. 0.05. Uh, Harden was back. Yeah, coming up for quite a finish in the women's yeah. there. Uh, in the men's, Mays clawed back time to take a fourth on the stage for the Belgian rider. Um, and fifth overall, keeping a top three firmly in his sights. Yeah, and a little notable one, Jon Deniel of the giant factory off-road. had been strong all day and it was going to pay off because he was uh, fourth overall going into the last stage. Oh, yeah. Um, could any of those riders, though, get close to the Yeti pairing of Rude and Lukasic, who were pulling away from Melamed in third place? Big game. Gaps coming yeah, up. Yeah, definitely. Stage six, the final, Kamagutsa. Yeah. I got a couple of stats actually for you. 4.1k long, Yeah. nearly 400 awesome. meters of descent as well. I yeah. mean, riders were also reseeded. That's how they're doing it now for the final stage. So would this play into the hands of some or would we see a shake up in the final results? Yeah, the pressure would build a big stage of the day. Um, Isabeau Kaduri, remember injury at the start there. She limped home in fifth place, enough to see her finish Fourth in the overall though. That's damage limitation result. right yeah, there. I think, very, uh, very good. For the overall, all points count, don't they? So actually yeah. securing any she can is well worth. Ella Connolly separated race leaders Barona and Harden in second place on the stage. Not quite enough to move her up the overall though, finishing in third. Yeah, uh, Bex Barona though, backed up her performance all day with a stage win on the final stage, extending her lead over Harden to eight seconds in the overall. Uh, and notably, a strong finish from Morgan Shah in fourth, saw a round out the top five in the overall. Okay, on to the men's then, mate. Now, Moya made a mistake on five, cost him a bit of time, but would hammer the biggest stage of the day to get a second place on it. Strong final stage. 
And also for Maya Smith as well, winner of round one. He put in a seventh on the last stage for his 17th overall. Yeah, that's amazing that Moya could get second place in this stage after that mistake, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, crazy. Yeah, he made up some time somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, Jesse Melamed would make a mistake on the final stage too, costing him some time, but he still finished a strong third overall. Yeah, good result for Jesse. Right, it was a battle of the Yetis though to take the top two <laughs> spot. Lukasic got third on the final stage, enough to net him second in the overall. Yeah, an amazing result. But of course, Rude, he got stage win and of course took the whole race. <sighs> um, and that's going to be a very strange dynamic in the Yeti yeah. pits because obviously big celebrations, uh, Lukasic and then we've got Rude and then obviously Barona taking the win. Yeah. But then it's going to be a slightly weird dynamic between Lukasic and Rude going forward, isn't there? Well, I mean, I reckon there'll be a good bit of bants. We'll have yeah. to see how this one unfolds. But... <laughs> To actually find out how it unfolded from a rider's perspective, I caught up with Charlie Murray earlier to see how it went for him. All right, Charlie Murray, thank you for joining me, mate. First up then, Derby practice. Let's talk about the weather because it's unavoidable. <laughs> how yeah, was it? It was, it was weird. It, it was raining all day and the trails just deteriorated. Every stage was getting muddier and muddier and the bikes were struggling, the riders were struggling, but so, at some point you just throw caution to the wind and you just have to you know commit and have fun so it turned out to be all right but it was a bit of a slog yeah and uh we should mention this race is like back to enduro of old should we say so there was no uplift there was no shuttling it was just all leg power for you guys and girls yeah it's all, all analog so <laughs> it, was, it was the practice day was big and because it was so wet and muddy you're traveling so slow like you don't carry any speed when you're pedaling you're not rolling fast so it's like it makes everything seem steeper on the way up and flatter on the way down. <laughs> <laughs> and how has that affected, like, say, yourself as a rider, but like other riders who maybe, you know, should we say, aren't quite as used to that? Yeah, I mean, I en always enjoy the mud and the slippery conditions. And, yeah, the, the dirt in Derby is really good. It, like, co it's quite sandy and it copes well. There's lots of rock, and even when it's wet, the rock's quite grippy. So that was lucky. Otherwise, it would have been, some of it would have been unrideable. But most of it you can ride through, all right, but... Everyone was just, you know, having sketchy moments. There were a few crashes. I fell down a bank. But... No, yeah, so I saw that clip of you. What happened? <laughs> oh, I just like hooked a rut and got kind of off balance. And then I couldn't stop. And I just slowly teetered over the edge and then ended up <laughs> bush bashing down in the sticks in the trees. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I saw you ended up quite far down there. And I, I, I could imagine many other riders probably suffered similar fates, I could bet. Yeah, I think everyone had a story from practice day of, you know, some crash or some mishap that went on. But I mean, most people were quite positive, but it, it, it's not, you know, not quite as enjoyable when you've been out for five or six hours covered in mud, soaking wet and cold. It was quite cold as well. So let's move on to race day. The weather obviously looked a lot better from what we could see. The sun had come out. How did this affect the tracks? Yeah, so the weather on race day was basically perfect we woke up to a blue sky sun was shining and the tracks got they started to dry up but they like up the top of the hill it's really thick jungle and ferns and quite dense forest so the sun couldn't get through so those tracks were still slippery um but, but all the rock all the rock slabs dried out perfectly so that was awesome and then you could commit to those hold your speed okay so it, it got better as the day went on it, it only dried up more from what we could see yeah, it just kept getting better and better, but it, there was still some slippery parts out there for sure. Yeah. yeah, it looked like there was some bogs, especially, was it stage? Yeah, the big G out at the bottom of that slab on yeah. five. Yeah. What and was it like? The G out was just basically full with mud, and they were packing it in with a rake between the riders. No. So someone would run up there, pack it in with a rake, and then someone would come down and hit this muddy compression, and you just have to try and hang onto your bars. It was, yeah, it was wild. There was a, there was a couple of big crashes there. Yeah, right. What was the crowds like out there? The, oh, the spectators were awesome. The Aussies, like, they know how to get behind a race. Both races here in Australia have been great, and especially in Derby, they were just going crazy. There were chainsaws, people dressed up in costume, people shouting, you know, yeah. funny things. or doing the silent heckle, just saying nothing as you went <laughs> past. It was, it was so entertaining. Nice, man. And how did your race go? Like, you please, so you, you finished seventh overall? Yep, yep, please finished up that. in seventh place. Very happy. Yeah, it's always good to be in the top 10, especially at the moment. It's so competitive, so I, I was happy to finish in seventh. Okay, any any highlights or lowlights? 
from race day, not um, crashing in any bushes. Yeah, no, race day we stayed out of the bushes. It was it was a pretty smooth day for me. Um, I got some mud in my eyes on stage five, so that was the low light. I was trying to see where I was going with mud all through oh, one no. of my eyes. Uh, otherwise, it was good, but heaps of pedaling like in the stages, so they're so physical. Wow. All right, Charlie, look, thanks for the full update on the race. Congratulations on the seventh place and uh, hopefully catch you in finale. Yeah, thanks a lot. I'll be there. Looking forward to it. Okay, let's take a look at the women's overalls. Uh, and obviously, Bex Barona with a strong lead there, but Isabeau has kept herself in the race for sure. And Ella Connolly, uh, consistency is getting her in the top three. Yeah, and in the men's then, well, Richie Rude obviously smashing it mate and he mm. i mean 782 points dan booker despite a slightly off pace in the second round here in second place and luke meyer smith regardless of that 17th in third place yeah richie Reed's gonna be hard to catch mm. though um team overall uh obviously yeah he had a great day and they're doing very well in the overall standings yeah that's it then for the enduro world cup for a little while now as we have a gap in racing mark until june 2nd anyway for finale liguri the home of enduro racing but don't worry there is more news coming I'm going to be heading out to Novia Mesto for the first round of XC World Cup Whoa. racing. Yes, we're going to have short track, a marathon and Olympic distance. Yeah, and of course, you can keep up to tabs with all of the racing action on GMBM Racing. So make sure you subscribe. Uh, and of course, if you want to get the live action of the downhill and cross country finals in the World Cups, then of course, subscribe to GCM Plus.